Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with a Disney stock update. Disney is going all in on sports betting and it could be a game changer for the stock. I'll show you why, the other catalyst for shares of Disney and why my target just jumped to $185 a share, 127% upside return. Don't forget to join the community by tapping that subscribe button so you don't miss a single episode and don't miss next Wednesday's episode, our first ever drink with me recap. I'll be reviewing the best and worst stocks over the last month while enjoying my favorite adult beverage. So that should be interesting anyway, if not a great look into some of the stocks I'm watching. I'll show you those catalysts for shares of Disney next, but first I'm relaunching our custom portfolio tracker with a 33% discount only with the link below in the description. This is so much more than just a stock portfolio tracker where you put in your stocks, how much you paid. It's going to tell you the sector, the industry, your return on each stock. It'll even show you how much of your portfolio you have in each stock. Here you can put in two stocks to compare them side by side as well as against the sector averages and 10 critical measures for stock analysis. The spreadsheet downloads all this data directly from the internet so you get up to date information. Here in the investing goals tab, you can put in your age, years until you want to retire and how much you invest each month. The spreadsheet is then going to use your current portfolio, past returns and how you invest to estimate exactly how much you'll have when retirement comes around. And it'll also help you find how much you'll need to live well. This is a complete stock portfolio and financial goal spreadsheet and again I'm relaunching with a 33% discount. You're going to get lifetime access to any updates, videos on how to use it and how to reach your goals. I'll leave a link in the description below to that special relaunch link. Check that out. Back to our main topic though and there is no way around it. Disney has been a dog for more than two years. Like if you put the Lone Ranger and John Carter in a bag and then puked in the bag, it still wouldn't stink as much as Disney stock. Shares are down 57% from the 2021 peak and going nowhere in this year's stock rally. Over the last year, the broader market is up 13%. Disney is down 19% underperforming the market by 32%. But in all of this, valuation on the shares has become attractive. We see here in Morningstar data that Disney trades for 1.7 times on a price to sales basis. Now that's the price of the stock, 1.7 times the company's reported revenue per share. And that is a 48% discount to the stock's five-year average. Normally, these shares trade for as much as 3.3 times sales. The problem here is you can't just buy a cheap stock just because it's cheap. Cheap stocks like Disney with lots of bad news don't just rebound on nothing. They need a catalyst to turn things around and for the stock price to start trading close to those long-term price multiples. Otherwise, if you're just buying something because it's cheap, there's no catalyst for a change, then you could be trying to catch that proverbial knife, sitting on your money going nowhere for years to come. I'll get right to the catalyst that could turn Disney shares higher next. I usually dig deeper in to explain the business on these, but who doesn't know Disney? The chart here is pretty busy, but that's just what Disney is, busy and in everything. With studio acquisitions, it owns Marvel, Fox, Pixar, and its own Disney brand. It owns the theme parks, old school media channels like ESPN, ABC, and A&E networks. Now it's also dominating that streaming with Disney Plus and Hulu. In fact, Disney is so pervasive across generations. In a recent series on the top 10 loved brands by generation, only the boomers failed to mention Disney in their top 10 brands, with Disney ranking fourth for Gen Z and millennials and fifth for Gen X. But the company has had its problems, and I'm not talking about that tiff with Florida Governor DeSantis. That's just a sideshow. The pandemic hit park attendance by 75%, and it's still not back to pre-pandemic levels. The company is knees deep in a streaming war with Netflix and finding out how much it costs to turn out all that content content. And the slow death of those cable TV networks hasn't helped those legacy assets like ABC, ESPN, or the A&E networks. So there definitely needs to be a catalyst to get more optimistic about this stock. I've stayed on the sidelines for more than two years watching the shares plunge because there really wasn't any reason to get excited about it until now. The first catalyst here is going to be that ongoing rebound in park attendance. Global attendance at the theme parks was up 47% last year to 115 million people, but it still has a lot of growth left back to the 150 million record pre-pandemic. Those parks are still an iconic and multi-generational draw and the rebound over the next few years will continue to juice revenue with super normal growth before adjusting back down to maybe three to 5% annual growth. Even on the lower post-pandemic attendance, Disney almost saw more visitors than its next five largest competitors combined and booked nearly three times the revenue. Here we see in revenue data through last year, the park segment is still the second largest contributor and added more than $10 billion in additional revenue. The 20 to 30% in remaining rebound to pre-pandemic levels could add another $8 billion in sales. 
of the next catalyst I'm watching, while those streaming stocks have sold off on the higher costs and the Hollywood strikes, apart from Netflix, Disney has the best library of assets and franchise shows that are going to help keep its subscribers. To give you an idea here, Disney owns 14 of the top 20 films in terms of box office revenue with its Marvel, Pixar, Lucasfilm, and Fox Studios. The big news though, the catalyst that has me looking at these shares again, Disney is teaming up with sports betting company Penn Entertainment to launch a new app called ESPN Bet next month. It is a 10-year partnership that will link ESPN's dominance in sports with the growing market for online gambling. Penn is going to operate the app while Disney will market it. Sports gaming is legal in 38 states and the District of Columbia, growing at a 55% annual pace from $7.6 billion in revenue to $11.8 billion next year, according to an industry consulting firm. In the deal, Penn will pay Disney $1.5 billion and ESPN is going to receive warrants worth $500 million to buy shares of Penn Entertainment, which is why I think there's a very good chance that eventually Disney just ends up buying Penn completely. So this isn't just about the new revenue stream for Disney. Disney, but also about it coming into that growth in gaming and possibly taking a much bigger slice of that market. Right now, online sports betting is dominated by FanDuel and DraftKings with a combined 72% of the market, but is there any doubt that Penn can take a bigger share with that marketing behind Disney and ESPN? This side of the market, online gaming is one of my favorite growth stories, and I'm up 129% over the last year in shares of DraftKings. I still like that company, especially after the recent slide, but is there any question that Penn and Disney are going to be coming for some of that market share? Looking at analyst estimates, we see a forecast for 20 26 revenue of $104 billion for Disney. Now that's growth of just 5% a year from this year's $89 billion, and I expect way low given these catalysts. Theme park revenue is still rebounding, and besides that bump in gaming revenue, ESPN could get a boost as well just as that betting app sends more people to the channel. I think the company does much better than this, with a low estimate closer to about 7% annual growth over the next three years. Now that would take us to sales of about $110 billion through 2026. If we revisit that valuation, renewed growth and sales should bring investors back and get the stock trading for closer to that longer term price multiple of about 3.1 times on a price to sales basis. So if we take this $110 billion sales estimate times the 3.1 price to sales multiple that it should be trading at, we take that $341 billion market cap and divide by the current market cap. We see here the current market cap right now, $149.69 billion, about $150 billion. So if we trade our market cap estimate for 2026, $341 billion, divided by this 150 billion current market cap, we get 2.27. We take that times the shares, 81.81. .81. We get about $185 per share. $185 per share divided by 81.8. That is 127% return from here. Check out that stock tracker and financial goals spreadsheet and get the 33% relaunch discount with the link below. Or click on the video to the right for my five forever stocks, the five stocks I'm buying for the next 30 years. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.